Welcome, my name is Candice. I'm here at the Passionate Home in downtown Langley, BC. We are going to be making something beautiful. So we are, it's unusual. So not everyone's gonna have this particular piece at home, but what I'm showing you, you can put on anything. So we're just gonna take something random that you might have at home that needs a refresh and beautify it. And so we are going to be taking it's kind of beautiful just as it is. This um, mounted antlers, and we're going to mount it again. Carrie, can you yeah. see that board? So this is just old bar barn. No, it's not. It's fence. It's fence boards, boards that we've just connected together, and and uh, so we're gonna have some fun with this. Um, I'm gonna set that one aside because we're gonna start on on this piece first. So what we're using today, we are going to be using molds. Um, so the Juliet mold is going to be the the main one and we may use just a tiny piece of dainty flourishes we'll see if we get to that one or not um, we are using air dry clay iron orchid designs I happen to have a little butterfly in my stash that was made with the resin ages ago and um, we're going to be using this little guy and he's from I think it's just called butterflies already from a mold there I have a stash. Whenever I'm pouring resin, I don't know if you guys do this, but if I have any extra, I just keep pouring and then I hold it because I can re, uh, if I wanted to re-manipulate this, I just heat it up with a heat gun and I can adjust it. But I already molded this in a cup. That's what I did to keep the shape. So anyway, I digress. All right, so we are also going to be using some paint inlays um, from the melange, some little bits of the roses. And so to get my theme, roses, roses, it's gonna be beautiful. Alrighty, so we're gonna set that one aside. And then I have a tiny little piece of transfer. I think it's from the catalog, the small one um, last year's, last, last, last ones. Anyway, this is in my stash too. All these little bits that haven't been used, don't throw anything away. So the first thing that we're going to do, I have already cut out the pieces that I wanna use um, from the paint inlay. So. I love the base of this, so I don't want to put paint over it and, and get rid of this old chippiness because I think it's quite beautiful. So I'm going to just use a clear lacquer, a matte lacquer into this, and I'm going to lay my inlay into that. So we're going to start there. So I've sort of laid it out, I think I wanted it there, I'm just going to bring this little dude back for a second, because I want to make sure that it's coming out from behind. So that's sort of where I'm going to place them. I can't remember which, I think this is going to come like here. Did people know you could do this in the locker? I don't know. You can. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Alrighty, so I am just going to, so I know this is about three fingers up. This one's going here. This one's over here. We'll start with this little piece here. So I'm just gonna go into my lacquer. You can use whatever it is that you have. Because this board is so rough, I'm really going to make sure that I have a good buildup on there. So it's not just a super thin layer. I want a fairly good layer on there. All right, so while it's wet, again, I'm putting the image side down. I want that grid to be looking up at me. And I'm just going to add this one here. Because again, it's in this very um, craggy wood, if you will, I'm going to make sure that I brayer it, textured, thank you. And then this is a very um, stiff brush. And again, I'm just going to pounce that right into all those details, all those little crevices. All right. And then I'm going to spritz it with a wee bit of water. And again, I'm just going to push it in there because I really want to make sure that it has good contact. So now we're just going to keep moving on. If you have not used an inlay yet and you're sort of on the fence, you want to try it, it's a little bit of, um, you know, a learning curve, but once you do it, they're so amazing. So, but this melange is just such a great one. I want to show you the back. Look at that eight pages of gloriousness and look at how many smalls are in there and you can just you there are so many options start with something small and uh, give it a try because the truth is you're going to love it gonna love it okay so making sure that I've got some good coverage on here going both directions I want it to go into there a wee bit and actually over a wee bit there we go 
again, just pushing it right in where it needs to go. I'm gonna wet it there. Really make sure all of this gets in. And here's the thing, is this is super chippy anyway. I don't mind if it doesn't come out perfectly pristine, because look at the rest of the board. It's just gonna match the board, right? So I'm not going for perfection. All right, so again, just making sure that's right into all of those details. Okay, we're going up to the upper corner up here. I'm just making sure that the whole board has a little bit of this coverage, just so that when it's done, it all will, um, it'll just tie together. It won't look like there's some gloss or, even though this is a matte, it has a little bit of sheen to it. So I do wanna make sure that the whole thing has been unified. Again, those, those lines, the grid on the top is looking up at me. All right, so again, right inside of there, I try to do one ahead of time. So I know exactly what I'm doing. But of course, we only had one of these. All right, so here we go. Just getting all of those details in. And again, pushing it in. I know, right? So I am doing this in lacquer. So that means I'm not waiting for it to be fully, fully dry. If I was doing this in a chalk style paint that doesn't have polymers in it, I can let it dry, walk away, and come back in three weeks and wet it and peel it off and not have a problem. Depending on your lacquer or your paint, give, it, give a little test with a little piece because everyone's going to be different. If it has polymers in there, so the sealer's in there, um, chances are you don't want to fully let it dry because you may not get that paper off. Okay, so we're just gonna set this aside. I think it looks pretty good. Did I spray that one? I can't remember. So let's just double check. It does look like it. Alrighty. So this is going to set aside for a minute. But look at how it's coming, right? What type of lacquer do you use? So I did a um, Annie Sloan matte lacquer because that's what I have at my fingertips at the moment. So I'm gonna set that one aside there. And now we're going to work on this beauty. So pretty. All right, so my vision is to actually just leave this fairly plain. And we're going to work on this section here. So the first thing I'm going to do is to get here. I'll let it face you guys for now while I'm getting ready. I'm going to use my Juliet mold. So Juliet mold is one big mold. So the whole thing is solid. It's got all these little connections. Um, it is definitely a little bit trickier to do the whole thing because often when you're doing a small little piece, you just have enough clay to fill that little cavity, right? Um, but when you're doing this, so I'm not going to try and roll it out and fit it perfectly. I'm going to piece it together. Um, the other thing is I don't actually need the whole mold. So I need about a half of it and I can always add to it. That's the beautiful thing too, layer, layer, layer. Especially when you're using the clay, you can just mold it over the last layer, right? And add pieces where you need it. All right, so here we go. I'm going to dust these with cornstarch. I um, did a little something last night and I always wanna make sure that I'm well prepped so that you guys get the best <laughs> experience. There we go, that's exactly. So I have a number of these little tins at home. And I turned it into this. Look at how pretty is this. So this is the Juliet mold that we're using today. So I'm going to be doing something very similar to this, but because it will still be very soft, I thought I'd do one and I'll show you how I'm gonna wax it at the end on this one, which will give you the final look on the other one. So I know that I need a fair amount of this. Okay. So this is the air dry clay. Again, I always tell people it will dry out if you leave it in the air. So I, um, I use that press and seal, press and seal cling wrap. So it actually sticks to itself. It has a light tack to it. And then I know that uh, it's not gonna dry out. All right, so I'm just gonna warm it up a little bit in my hands. You don't need to overwork this. The, I find that the uh, Iron Orchid uh, air dry clay, it's an artist grade clay. So it really, it's easy to work with. Easy, easy. Start piecing it together. So again, I'm just pushing it in, rubbing off the excess um, to move it around. When I did mine at home, I did pop it in the freezer. 
um, because it has so many little moving parts. And then the whole thing came out as one solid, nice little popped right out so easily. When I did um, the little piece behind me, it was solid, right? Because I, I froze it. And then when I took it out, I was able to look at what I wanted and then just break off. So this is a, a piece that I broke off and added here and some little bits. So the leaves here, so I could manipulate it where I wanted. And you'll be able to see in this, when I do pop it out, um, I can keep it solid. And certainly if you had poured resin, it would be one solid piece, right? Because they are all connected. Every bit is connected. So I'm going to use my brayer on here because again, it's such a big space. I want to make sure it's all the way into all those details. And then I'm going to use my thumb to, maybe I'll get some more over there, to work off some of the excess. Okay, so the other thing I can use is when you get your transfer packet, you're going to get one of these little tools in it. And I like to hold the majority and then using this micro rim that's here, there's this little rim, if I just on an angle push against it, there you go, you can see I'm getting this beautiful clean edge now. And if some of it pops out, I'll just shove it back in. Super user friendly, right? I'm working from the inside out. In some places I probably have way too much clay, but you know. Oops. Push that back in. This one has been opened a few times, so it's a wee bit drier than normal. Finding those edges, working it off. And 100%, um, if you're new to trying it, pop it in the freezer. It really does, it's kind of a game changer. For how long would you put it in the freezer? 10 minutes. Oh. Yeah, not even. So again, I'm going to roll it just to make sure I have a nice flat back and you're gonna find there's these little bits in here they'll just pop out later so we don't want to get this too dry you want to flip it over you want to roll it back pushing from the back oh you make it look so easy come on <laughs> Wow. Well, I have cornstarch, so it is easy. Oh, I lost Beautiful. one of these, but doesn't matter. So here again, right? If a piece breaks off, I'm not too worried. I can piece it together. Let's have a look. I think I'm going to remove this one. Just like that. I can just mold it how I want it. It's almost like you're decorating a cake. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think I'm liking that. I'm liking this one here. I'm gonna get rid of, there's a tiny little piece at the back. I actually even like that going up over the antlers. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful when I paint that one to not get paint on my antler. But, and then I think, I think that might just be the magic right there. What do you think? What do you think, in more? I love it. It almost looks like two eyes in a way. Oh, <laughs> it does. So basically I'm using a thick white glue that's going to dry clear. Um, having said that, on this particular piece, I'm going to paint the whole thing. So once it's glued on, I'm just gonna paint the whole thing. Um, so I'm gonna cover that anyway. Um, I do like painting the molds while they're fresh, although you do have to be um, gentle because I don't wanna put a lot of pressure, a lot of digging into these because they're so fresh. And I'll probably, once they're glued on, just give them a little hit with the blow dryer just to give them a wee crest on the top. I am actually going to separate this. All right, so I put the glue in the center of my piece and I'm working it all the way out to the edges so that it will lay nice and flat. There's our leaf, joining our leaf. And I'm gently making sure that all those edges are touching. This is the next one we're gonna go with. And this was, I think this way. And again, there's no right or wrong way. Just get her on there. All right. Look at all the detail in all this, though. I mean, it's so beautiful. There we go. Somehow. Somehow like this. I think this was higher up. 
much higher up because that's going to connect to there. So I'm just manipulating it. I'm not too worried that I have, um, you know, as I'm sliding it up some glue because again, I'm going to paint over top of all of that. And we have our last little piece up here that we're going to glue as well. All right. Uh, no, I wanted that little one going over the, the antlers a wee bit. All right, so I'm loving how that's looking. And now we're gonna get some color on it. I'm wondering if we need to just check on this for a second. Mm. I'm just gonna come in and check that one little piece up here. It's still fairly wet, um, but I just want to check on it. Oh, look, okay, so come and see. We're ready to pull this. Look at that. Mm. Beautiful. Oh. So these can be reused. So we don't throw them away even after the lacquer. Now it might be different in each person's lacquer, but try a little piece and try it. Okay, so here we go. I always think this is kind of like the money, right? When you, yes, for sure. So when you're going to lacquer, I do try and get the whole thing that's been in, um, that's attached wet so that it will peel off. I wanna do it backwards so that they can see better. Ready? Mm -hmm. So wow, pretty. Beautiful. So it just kind of, adds to that whole um, chippiness of the wood to start with, right? A little bit of water. I might, might miss myself in a minute. Yeah, so if you don't wet it enough, it's going to stick. All right, and leave it for like 30 seconds. See, I'm starting too soon. I'm going to have to start over here. There we go. Can you see it? Mm-hmm. Okay, last one here. Here we go. Okay. There you go. And I love how it's all, we've kept the integrity of that wood because it's chippy and beautiful. And so that's what I wanted. That was the vision we were going for there. All right, so we're gonna tuck this aside so it's out of the way and I don't make a mess. All right. So now we're coming back to this and we're just going to be adding some color here. Uh, okay, whoop, little squish. I am just putting a number of colors together and I am going to just play with them. So I want a nice soft brush. So we're just gonna go here. And I'm not gonna use a lot of paint. I'm going to add some water to make sure I can get it into all of the details. And um, where's my water? That's what I'm gonna do, okay? so. Uh, because it's so warm in here, this already has a crust. So I'm not even worried about that at all. We're gonna go for it. So I'm going to just get some water on my palette here and I'm just gonna pick some of these colors and I'm just gonna get started. And I'm just tapping it in. And I'm not even worrying about anything. I just wanna make sure that everything, if I get it on here, I'll just wipe it off later. Everything has a coat. But you know what, you could do this with anything, whatever you have, um, right? It, it, yeah. You can hit up some thrift stores or antique oh, stores. Oh, totally. If you wanted. Yeah. The other thing that, you see this shape here? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes you can find, um, it's, it's for holding um, tiny little spoons and it sort of has that shape. And then just um, pop those off and then paint it. Right? And it looks like that. And then you could create your own. I'm gonna have to definitely clean that up later, but you're getting the picture, right? So I'm making sure to water down my paint a little bit because I do find that there's so many little facets in these, right? And so I'm getting into all of those little creases and things. It's like the one up here, right? Mm -hmm. There's this, do you see this one up here? It's a little one, but you could still just throw some little roses on there or whatever and make it yours and unique, right? So it doesn't look like it came from a big box store. Make it your own unique piece. Okay, so that's got the majority of my base color. It's gonna give this a quick little wipe under here. And until this is sealed, I can come back and clean it up. So I'm not too worried about some of the areas that I didn't want to get hit with paint. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a detail brush. I still have my colors here. I'm gonna add a little bit of a hot pink. Um, you know, shocking, 
shocking. And um, I'm actually just gonna, I need like nothing, okay? That's gonna do it. Super concentrated. Um, and so I'm just going to use water. Water's going to be my friend here. There we go. My water bottles have an attitude. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick up tiny, look at how little, I'm just like creating like a wash, okay? Mm -hmm. So now I'm just coming in here and I'm just dusting it over and letting it fall into the creases where it wants to. And I can come back in with a little bit stronger. I like, in this particular case, I like doing it into the wet on wet. Um, because then it just softens it as well. Mm -hmm. So I can start strong and work my way out. And that's one there. And again, you can see how the more concentrated, this one is kind of into all those details. That's, the water really helps. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of that green again in this one and just tap it in. Can you see what I'm doing up here? Mm -hmm. So I'm just tapping it into all of those details. This one has a little bit of pink on there. And I'm not, too too worried like this is don't freak out about it because uh, it's art right it's fluid loving it so now I'm just gonna tuck into some of this green and I still I'm using the same brush and I'm totally happy to get a little bit of of um, pink in there if it does not too worried about that at all and again, some pieces I'm going right over bits of rose. It's okay. Look, let's just add a little bits in here. So it's going to soften. I'm going to get a little bit more of that green and just tuck it in a wee bit. That was a little bit strong, but watch what's going to happen. This is, oops, wrong one. If I just tuck a little bit of water on my brush even, and I can flood that off. Okay, a little bit green. A little bit green. There, there we go. go. Let's wipe this. Okay. So I'm going to hit this with just a little bit of um, air so that I can dry that off. It's like a beautiful wedding And cake. then I'm going to just kind of give it a slight wash with that original color. Okay. Make sure nothing blows away. The other thing we need to do, there we go, is our little butterfly. So I think I want him nestling right in here somewhere in there. And um, I should have brought up the hot glue gun. Um, oh, so we yeah. might not be able to glue it right away, but I'm going to hold it up so you can see what it's going to look like. But I thought we'd do him with a little bit of a pretty blue. So he doesn't have to be the same, same. The hummingbird from the new Dewdrop Pond would be really pretty as well, depending on the size of your antlers as well, what you want to get in there. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to, I'm actually going to paint the whole thing to start with. And then all those details will come together when I add some more color. Okay. It almost looks like white chocolate right now. Goes with our wedding cake theme here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, maybe this is a wedding gift. You right? Know, you could put somebody's name on it. Or you totally could. Do the yeah. flowers in their color, you know, their right? wedding colors. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's our basic. I'm actually going to tuck slightly into that pink and just bring some little bits of can you see it without really um, and it doesn't have to be perfect either right because you could add a little gold gild to his wings or a I know black, I think I'm gonna add some black I think because I want to I'm gonna blow dry him now I want to try and highlight all of those details look at how soft and whimsical that is so pretty but you know, butterflies often have a little pop of something, something. So we're going to get some black in there. And maybe later, because I love some guild, but I didn't bring it up today. So I could just use my finger, even, and just rub across the tops, right? It's probably the easiest option. See how those are highlighting? There you go. Another option would be using just a really flat brush and using the flat side of it so that you're not getting it everywhere and into all those details or into the grooves but just on the details. Okay. Is it coming alive? Mm -hmm. yeah. There we go. Although I think I do want to give him, I want, it, I want that inside. 
little part Give to a be. Little brush yeah, I'm gonna get a little brush on my top. Yeah. Oh, the details on these molds are so amazing. Okay, look at that. And then if I take a teeny little brush, and if I, I want to just give his body here a little bit more black. And his antenna. Um, okay, so look at this. My hands are super goopy, but look at how pretty that's going to be on top of there. Beautiful. Oh, look. Oh, yeah. The camera. Uh, yeah. Butterfly looks great. Now that I think of it, I am just going to give the back a quick touch of the paint as well. Because it's going to be seen from both sides realistically. At least a little bit. I'm not going to be able to actually glue him on right now because I forgot my hot glue gun. All right. So that's going to just set aside and dry. Okay. I'm going to set that one there. Okay. So I do want to come over this with a little bit of the um, really light sort of country gray color here. And again, I want it really watery. I'm going to add lots of water in there. And I'm going to have my wet wipe handy. And I'm just going to run over top of all of this and let it fall where it falls and tap it back. Okay, so again, it's just going into details. Right, softening the whole thing. Okay, so lots of detail is coming out when you just kind of add that secondary bit, right? It goes into the grooves, it shows the details, it highlights. All right, so this is just going to wait for us now. It's pretty much done. So I do want to make sure that it is dry. I'm just going to put a little piece of transfer down there. So your image transfer is not going to stick if your paint or your piece is wet. You do want to make sure that it is fully dry and cool to the touch, okay? So there we go. Because he looks very French, I think. I don't know. So we thought Paris and and look at how, where's our little butterfly? Look, it kind of works together, doesn't it? All right, so basically I'm going to turn it my way so I can get it as centered as possible. It has a backing sheet that it is stuck to. Um, you're going to take that off. You're going to line it up where you want it and then I'm going to lay it down. So this is, it has a light stick to it. It's not super sticky, just a light one. And so it's going to stay there. I'm going to take one of my little sticks that comes with it to transfer on and I'm just going to rub over top of it. So I'm transferring it from this carrier sheet onto my substrate and often you can catch you can see it coming off it gets a little bit cloudy but that doesn't always happen I'm not seeing that this time can you see Carrie I've missed that little corner and it will be noticeable on my piece so I'm just gonna lay it right back down and go right back over it and make sure I've got it fully fully attached let's just see if we got her there we go there. And I'm going to flip this over and give it just uh, making sure that all of those little edges are actually down on there. Just rubbing it back. Mm. Alrighty. Beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful. Isn't that pretty? So we could, I considered putting some of the um, little, little bits of this coming up. Um, but I think I'm actually happy with it like this. I think if this was smaller, um, more this size, then I could have had them coming up. I still might add them, you never know. But I'm gonna say this is pretty much done. And this is going to be on here. But I wanna show you when this is dry, okay? Um, then we're gonna come in and seal it. And I like the idea of a white wax. So that's why I did this one yesterday, so that I can show you how that, again, transforms it. I want to bring out even more of those beautiful details. I could use um, a, a black wax, or um, there's different glazes that could darken decrepit, I think is one that a lot of the, the um, IOD people use as well. Um, I'm just going to use a white wax. So I don't want to wax that one yet because it's still super soft. Tomorrow I can come in and wax it. If I were to go in with this stiff brush, what's going to happen is I'm going to totally obliterate all of that. If I wanted this 
to be more grungy, I would use a dark wax, like a brown or a black wax. I love that it looks very French and so French country, and so we're just gonna go ahead with a white. So because I have so much detail in here, I don't want a clump of wax on my brush. So I'm just gonna make sure that it's nice and soft and I'm just gonna plate. Nice work. Look at that, right? It's like I planned it. Didn't. So again, this is just softening again. I could have gone in with a dark wax and make it um, grungier, um, but this is, I don't know, I think it's so pretty. And I'm really making sure that I get into all of those details because that's the whole fun, celebrate them. So now the wax is on there. Now I'm just gonna take a lint-free <laughs> paper towel and just rub off the surface. So can you see, let's find one here. See this one here? And now I'm gonna rub it off. So the detail, it's gone into all of that detail. Look at these leaves, right? So instead of just being flat, it's added so much dimension. That one turned out beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Even this one, right? You couldn't see those little details before until you add, oh, I'm getting a little bit of yeah, lint. Lint free yeah. is better, but this is showing you how that's going to work. And tomorrow, when this is dry, I'm going to bring that white wax in just to soften again and to bring it um, all those little bits to life. So this is how it's going to hang. And we're going to have our sweet little butterfly nestled up here, right? So we used the paint inlay melange. We used um, Juliet mold for our roses. And we used a wee piece of transfer from seed catalogs. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this has inspired you to take something that you have hanging on your wall that just needs a refresh and make it beautiful because these products just are amazing. If you like what you saw here, find a stockist near you because they're gonna be your new best friend. Um, go to ironorchiddesigns.com iron and, uh, and find a retailer where you live. Thanks guys.